did. The brain is an organ which should comply with Kleiber's law. If we look at our brains and subject them to Kleiber's law, we find that they're almost seven and a half times as big as would be expected for an animal of our size. Now that's huge. But if we then look at the amount of energy they use, the quotient is nearly 30 times as large as would be expected. And that is truly colossal. And it brings up another question. Where does the enormous amount of energy our brains need come from? Now, unless you're a breatharian, of course, the only place it can come from is the food we eat. So, you either need a very large gut with a large absorptive surface, or you need a very energy-dense diet, or, of course, both. So, have we got a large gut? Well, no. Quite the reverse, in fact. Using Kleiber's law, we find that our gut is actually much smaller than would be expected in an animal of our size. Our stomach, for example, is only about a third as big as would be expected. Our small intestine is only three quarters, and that's where most of the food is uh, absorbed. Our cecum is practically non-existent. You can see it there. We, we call it an appendix, about the size of a little finger. And our colon is only just over half what would be expected. Now, all of these values are considerably less than one. Now, this is particularly obvious in the case of the cecum. The cecum is part of the gut between the small and large intestines, which is present in all mammals, but with differing sizes depending on the mammal's natural food supply. Hindgut digesters, um, like the gorilla, have a large cecum, hosting billions of bacteria which break down plant materials such as cellulose. Exclusive carnivores, whose diets contain little or no plant material, have a much smaller cecum, often partially or wholly replaced by the vermiform, as it's called, appendix. And this is the case in humans. This is quite obvious when we compare the gorilla with the man in the picture I've got there. Look at the size of the gorilla's abdomen compared with a man's. This is because the gorilla's large abdomen is mostly cecum and colon, which in humans is very small. As a consequence, we absorb very little nutrition from our colons. Perhaps surprisingly, our energy intake is actually in accordance with Kleiber's law. We do eat about the same amount as any other animal our size. Our brain is only 2% of total body weight, but it uses as much as a quarter of our total resting energy. Um, and because it's so huge, something else has to suffer. This is why our gut is so small, and other energy-using organs such as the heart, liver, and muscles are also so puny compared to other animals. If we put all this together, we can only come to one conclusion. For the absorption of sufficient energy and nutrients for our bodies to function properly, our food must be very nutrient and energy-dense. Now, the only macronutrient with sufficient concentrated energy for this is fat. And fat meat is the only practical source, as eating plants would increase the consumption of carbohydrates and fibre. 